right, what's going on you guys? It's Resto, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the 19 Twink Hunter. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the gear, the best in slot gear choices, as well as the alternatives until you're able to obtain those best in slots. I'm also going to be going over talents, the typical builds that you guys are going to be using throughout your battlegrounds, and I'm also going to be going over some tips and tricks just to kind of help you make your guys' PvP a little bit smoother and just to help you guys out in the long run to make your PvP a little bit more fun. Um, but without further ado, let's get right into this guide. Alright, so here is the guide that has been long awaited for and you guys have been requesting a lot lately. So, here it is. A lot of pushbacks have prevented me from making this video, but uh, we're, uh, we're making it today. But uh, let's let's start in with the gear and let's uh, get the basics going. So this is a typical build that you guys are going to see a lot of hunters running before you guys even hit phase five or phase six. This is like mainly what everyone's going to be running. Um, a lot of you're going to be questioning that aren't really experienced in the twinking scene, and they're going to be asking, "Why aren't you running a two-hander with all these enchants?" Yada yada yada. Well, at this point there really is no reason to run a two-hander until the 25 agility is available which isn't until phase five so yeah um, let's start with the helmet though is the lucky fishing hat of course you're gonna apply the 100 HP Librem to that obviously that is the Librem of Constitution that you guys need a level 60 to apply for you um, and then the lucky fishing hat isn't available until phase four which is when the lucky fishing tournament or the fishing extravaganza tournament, I should say, comes out, and that's when you guys are able to complete that. Otherwise, you guys will be rocking the uh, green tinted goggles, the eight stamina, seven spirit. That's gonna be your good alternative. You can still apply the Libram to that until phase four comes out, which is surprisingly coming sooner than I really expected. But uh, yeah, that's the helmet, and then the neck is the Sentinels medallion for the Alliance, Scouts medallion for the Horde. Um, BGs are out, so you guys are free to grind away. Um, you guys need honored to get this neck. Um, it's pretty simple to get. It's about 55 wins, you know, 10 rep per cap, 65 per win. Add that up, you know, if you guys have a solid win streak. Um, as far as I'm concerned, just things I've been hearing, I my subscription has ended recently, so I haven't been able to really test the BG myself, but I heard BGQs are, are quite long. Um, they're not as active. Don't be discouraged. Normally, twinking really shouldn't be a thing until phase four or phase five when a lot of the gear has is out and free to farm. A lot of people are going to be focused on their um, end game tunes, so you guys got to take that in consideration. Um, let the game be a little bit older. Let you know the older content come out when people aren't as focused on end game um, and they're able to you know free play on other tunes. So this, if you see a long queue time, don't think it's how it's always going to be. It's just because everyone's focused on other things. Um, uh, moving on to the shoulder is the Talbar Mantle. Obviously, these three items are going to be your main items for every single twink that you guys make. So, just know if this should be the common sense stuff. Um, if you guys don't know how to get the Talbar Mantle, this is obtained through a quest chain um, that you guys get from the Wailing Caverns. You guys kill the Murloc, he drops a glowing stone, and has you go through this short little chain to get your shoulders. Really simple to get. Shouldn't have too much troubles going through that. Uh, moving on to the cloak, we have the Sentry's Cloak. This is another common cloak that a lot of people are going to go for um, that kind of fluctuates between the different twinks. Um, but this is the main agility cloak. You're going to plop three agility on that. Now, just like other twinks that I have been doing guides on, there are other items that you guys can run, and I will be going over this as well. So, um, right now you can run three agility on this cloak. Now, this is my recommendation as well, is to get a second sentry cloak and get the plus, plus five all resistance on that. Reason being, you guys are going to be coming across a lot of casters. With that being said, you guys should also rock this cloak when you guys are going against a caster or a 1v1 in the caster period. Um, to get that resistance on there, kind of help you guys out within your duels or your PvP in general. Moving on to the cloak for the alliance, you guys have Tunic of Westfall. This is obviously a common sense go-to. You're going to slap all stats on there. Um, you guys are really going to go big dig damage on the hunter. Hunters can really pump out damage, so you guys are going to try to go as glass cannon as possible. That's personally what I would do. Um, that's just me. Um, but you also want that survivability as well because as a hunter, you kind of want a medium balance to it, but you also want somewhat of a glass cannon to pump out some pretty strong hits. 
um, give them big numbers. Um, obviously, the Horde cannot get the Tunic of Westfall, so you guys are going to go for the Black and Defias armor. Um, I have 100 HP on here as well for those who cannot obtain the all uh, stats on there. Um, I know a lot of people just can't afford it at the time, which is no big deal. Um, 100 health is just as good, so go ahead and slap that on there. Um, if you, like I said, if you're a Horde, Black and Defias armor pretty common gear that you guys are going to be going for. Moving on to the bracers are the wranglers wristband of the monkey. Um, that's plus three, plus three, nine stamina on that. Obviously, it's common sense of what you guys are going to go for. Um, if you guys aren't going for the stam build, um, you're going to go for forest leather bracers for pure raw DPS. That's five agility with nine stamina on it. Nine stamina is going to be your uh, go-to enchant for every twink that you make. Nine stamina is best in slot no matter what the class is. You guys are just one that stamina that survivability that durability everything about that enchant in general is just going to help you guys out a bunch um, moving on to the gloves of the scouting gloves of the monkey you guys can look for the four four there are a bunch of variations of the monkey or just any like glove in general that has an off brand like this you're going to find 2-2, two, two. you're going to find 3-2 in agility and stamina and stamina agility. You guys are going to want the 4-4. Four, four. Make sure you guys find that one. That one is your best in slot glove. Um, anything else that you guys are getting, you're kind of cheating yourself out of there and you're getting ripped off. So make sure you look for the 4-4. Four, four. That's going to be a go-to. Um, if you guys want glass cannon, you guys could go for the bristle bark gloves. Um, you're not really getting much out of that though. I personally recommend going for the scouting gloves of the monkey out of all the gloves because it's because of that stamina. Like I said, you want a medium balance between mana and health, but you also want some DPS gear in there as well. So you can kind of fluctuate between the gear and what you want. Um, for the Alliance, you guys are going to be running the Deviate Scale Belt. This is a belt you guys can get from Wailing Caverns. There's a quest that you guys can do. Um, you guys do not need the pattern or the profession to make this you can have someone make it out for you the materials are very easy to obtain you get them through whaling caverns itself so um you should probably get it for like five gold in the auction house i mean if any if you're paying anything else higher i mean kind of getting ripped off in my opinion i personally bought it for three gold um i didn't really care to get the materials myself kind of bought it off the auction house so that's what you guys will be going um if you're on horde you guys get a very nice and sexy belt called the screechers belt this is through a nice little quest chain from the stone talon mountains um it's got a nice five intellect instead of the agility and it's got a nice 12 attack power on there as well so this is a very nice belt for the horde now for once this is a class where horde benefits the most from this in my opinion just because of the gear options that you guys are given i mean granite tunic of westfall is pretty huge along with seal of rin but to even it out you know we got the screechers belt and we got the trailblazer boots so i mean it's just simple simple stuff in there we also got some weapons as well to kind of help out with that but i'll get into that in a minute uh, moving on to the legs is the leggings of the fang and a slap 100 hp on that this is going to be for both factions obviously this is probably the best leggings in the entire bracket in general um if i have to say these are just nuts on stats very simple to get though you just get them from cobran take a left and wailing caverns kill him and you should get the pants from there moving on to the Boots for the Alliance. You're going to get Feet of the Lynx. That's 8 Agility, 3 Strength. You're going to slap Minor Speed Increase on there. Just like the 9 Stamina on the Bracers, you're going to put Minor Speed on every single Twink that you use. If you don't run Minor Speed Increase, you're just weird. Bottom line, you're just weird. Uh, for the Horde, you guys have the Trailblazer Boots, 3 Stamina, 7 Agility. Now, you guys don't need to run this on Horde. The Trailblazer Boots are just good for that Stamina, um, that good stability between... Um, DPS and survivability um, for a horde you can also run feet of the links if you guys want to go pure DPS but that survivability build trailblazer boots are very nice as well this is a class where trailblazer boots actually benefits the class and you can use them um, as a good slot moving on to the rings you're going to get seal of Rin this is obviously the go-to ring for the alliance this is a very nice and juicy ring it's got just about every single stat you guys need on there for the Horde, you go for the Seal of Sylvanas. Now, Horde, since we don't have a Seal of Rin, um, you guys have the option between going from Seal of Sylvanas, which is 8 stamina, 3 strength, or you can go for the Lavishly Jeweled Ring, which is the 2 agility, 6 intellect. Obviously, you're going to be between the two, whether or not you want DPS or do you want survivability. Now, that's on you guys and what you guys want to get. Like I say in other previous guides, if there is gear available, get it. 
Always have that extra gear in your bags for those who want to swap up later on in the scene of twinking and just want to have something new to roll with. Um, so obviously get both rings if you guys can. The second ring you guys are going to have is the Protector's Band or um, I think it's the Legionnaire's Band for the Horde. Uh, you guys are going to rock that for your second ring. Obviously there's really no alternative for that one. Um, this is pretty common sense and what to go for there. It's got some nice stats on there um, to help benefit your hunter in the long run. Moving on to the trinkets, we're going to have the Insignia of the Alliance. And if obviously if you're Horde, the Insignia of the Horde, you guys need at least a minimum of Grunt to achieve this trinket. Shouldn't be very hard, guys. I think it's about 150 honorable kills um, total. Uh, that's how much I got for Grunt uh, for my Rogue. But then again, I also farmed a bunch of level 30s and got a lot of honor out of that. So personally, it depends on who you're farming and how you are farming. But typically, 150 honorable kills um, a bunch, on a bunch of like level 25 plus usually got me to the Grunt rank. Um, almost rank 3, actually. So, yeah. Moving on to the other trinket is the Arena Grandmaster. Obviously, a not a lot of people are going to be able to get this right off the bat. So, you're going to rock the Minor Recombobulator from Engineering. So, comp that if you guys can. Um, otherwise, Arena Grandmaster is going to be your go-to. This is obviously a huge trinket to use and very beneficial in the, in the long run when you guys are going against like rogues and whatnot. So... Something you guys should really consider looking at too, if your server really isn't that populated in World PvP, then you guys are going to have a very good chance of getting this. Moving on to the weapons, um, for the Alliance, you're going to go with the Cruel Carb, and you're going to slap 22 Intellect on here. Um, this is going to be the initial um, enchant that you guys are going to be going for. Until Phase 5 comes out, then you're going to slap plus 15 Agility on there. Um, so you're going to have 12 attack power, which is very nice, but it's mainly used for the attack power when you guys are rocking the um, Furbolg Medicine Pouch and the uh, Sword until the 25 Agility comes out in Phase 5 as well. So these are the two that you're going to be rocking. Furbolg Medicine Pouch is obtainable through Falwood. I do have a guide on that. You guys can go ahead and watch my pre-planning guide. I have a link to it there. If you guys don't know how to get the Furbolg Medicine Pouch, that is something you guys should really look into getting. Obviously, you can't use the use uh, purpose of it. Um, that's common sense. Um, for those that are new, it's for the stam. Um, that their ability, the survivability, everything you want to call it, it's mainly for the stam. That's why everybody goes for it. So. These are the two that you're going to be using. For the weapon, you're going to get the Vemin Strike and put plus three scope damage on here. Now, this right here is something that is very looked down upon in some ways. Um, a lot of people don't want to go for this just because of the Venom Shot chance. It is a 10% chance for this to land, but it is very huge when it does land. Um, a lot of people are going to go for the Alliance is the Little Timmy's Pea Shooter. You're going to get more of a... Uh, like pure damage in total out of this but if you guys are looking for that proc damage which is actually pretty huge venom strike is the way to go but alliance you can also run the little team is pea shooter for the horde you're going to get to blow a plunder this is a horde only item this is the best bow for raw damage in general um horde you guys got a little favorite on that one um the Alliance, you guys also get to have the option between the Bandolier of the Night Watch or the Quiver of the Night Watch. Both are from the same quest. You guys have one or the other to choose from. So if you guys are going to run the Venom Strike, obviously go for the Quiver. If you're going to run Little uh, little Timmy's Peace Shooter, then go for the Bandolier of the Night Watch. This is all preference on what you guys want to do. If you guys want to have that 10% proc rate, which I do recommend going for, then go to the Venom Strike with the Quiver. Um, if you guys really don't care for that proc rate, which I don't see why you would, or wouldn't then go for the little Timmy's pea shooter with the bandolier of the night watch those are the two that you guys are gonna have to really decide on what you guys want to do personally uh, both are very good weapons both are very good to use there's really no one that's better than the other because they both have their uh their balances so with the weapons though you guys are gonna have the twisted chanter's staff this is going to be the item that you're going to be using when phase five comes out and you're able to apply the 25 agility to that item um, that's going to replace the two off hands for the horde you guys are going to have the wing blade instead of the cruel carb the wing blade obviously for the agility um, 15 agility on here if you guys are gonna eventually in the future run this um, build which is still nice to have you guys can fluctuate between the two even in phase five it's not just this weapon set you guys can have this for a good survival 
survivability build. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, a lot of people go for this, mainly when you guys are just free casting and you don't really have a much people on you, like when you're in the battlegrounds and you're kind of just mowing people down in mid. This is a very good weapon to have. But if you're doing like world PvP and whatnot, you have people on you, you know, you're actually doing duels. This is also a really good um, build to have as well for the Furball Medicine Pouch. But Horde, obviously your favorite. Um, Thank God we actually have some gear that makes us better than the Alliance a little bit. So Wing Blade, you're going to put 22 Intellect on there. Um, at the meantime, instead of the Cruel Carb 22 Intellect, you guys could have that, but Horde, you're crippling yourself if you're using the Cruel Carb over the Wing Blade. So put 22 Intellect on that. Um, otherwise, until Phase 5 comes out, put the plus 15 Agility on that, and then 25 Agility on your Twisted Chanter's Staff. That's mainly it for the gear. There really isn't much to a Hunter. Um, I will... Uh, the, the the way the hunters um, pets work it's kind of like it's kind of antsy and how to get into it but it is very simple to get to as well I mean I guess I can go over it in this guide it is it is a 19 hunter guide um, the three pets the three pets that you guys are going to be going for is like the rake the rake comes is uh, a, a hunter a lion I'm trying to think of this at the top of my head guys I usually want to take these videos so the rake comes from the Mole, Molgor, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's a, a, next to Thunder Bluff. So you go over there, you'll tame him at level 10. That's going to be the first pet. Even for Alliance, just, just go for the Rake. You're going to get him. You're going to level him. Usually up until, I want to say, you're going to have him to level 16. Um, until then, you're usually going to put him away into a bank. I don't recall if Classic can have more than one pet like you can in retail. I don't think you can. You might have to have one at a time. So just put him in the stables. Um, and then that's when you guys are going to go and learn a random pet just to get the max rank. Mainly the way leveling a pet works, you're mainly going for the max ranks. So you guys can have the most optimized DPS as a hunter. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and mute this sound. I'm just going to mute it all in general. So with that being said, once you guys do hit level 16, you guys have two options what you guys really go for um there is a wolf and there's a spider that you guys can go ahead and tame the spider comes from stone talon mountains which is what i recommend for both factions to go for because it's just an easy access point to get the warg or the wolf i should say is more tameable near shadowfang keep it's right outside the instance those wolves that roam, roam around that's what you're going to be going for for that but the deep moss creeper and the uh blood now work i want to say it's called um those are the two that you're going to tame um at level 16 so you hit to level 17 you get that max rank um once you are 17 this is when you guys can go um to get the great gore tusk i believe that's what he's called he's a boar that you guys are going to want to get he's really good for the rank three um claw so that's what the that's what the cat and the boar are for so you're going to get both of them to 17 and you're going to have those for the max three ranks now you guys can have three pets one is going to be 18 two of them can be 19 so you're not going to have all three at 19 you're going to have two at 19 um the way it works though is you're gonna have loyalty points so that's what really determines whether the pet stays with you or not um but mainly to get a rank six like like a best friend i guess you can call it um, usually takes about an hour and a half to knock out and it's like 5% of the hunters XP at the current level so you have to take that in consideration when you guys are leveling your pets so you guys want to get these as soon as possible when you can um, but yeah level 17 is usually once you have the both cat and the board is 17 you're able to move on to um, your third pet which is going to be the deviates um, from Wailing Caverns. Now, you can't tame them inside because you can only tame them outside of the instance. So, you're going to look for um, a level, I think, 17 deviate. You're going to tame him, and then that's when you're going to level him up, um, get him. They can be kind of tricky to tame. So, my best recommendation is to get uh, another hunter that's a higher level throw him into a freezing trap and then tame him through that way that is probably the best way to tame one of these deviates um, you guys could find yourself in a little bit of trouble um in taming them you guys can die a lot now there are a bunch of deviates that run around the thunderhawk you guys can look this up on wowhead the thunderhawk is probably the best bet to get as well that you guys can also get from the deviates they have the lightning bolt while well as the deviates they don't really have the lightning bolt as weird as that is so if you guys want that lightning bolt the thunderhawk is a really good one to go for um if you guys want that extra um damage and whatnot um other than that, that's about it. So you're gonna level them up to 19, and then you should, like I said, you should have two at 19, one at 18. It's pretty confusing to really 
listen to at first if you guys really don't know about it but if you guys are already familiar and how to like roll with it you just need to know what to tame you guys should be set um it's just it's a matter of looking into it um like i said matter of leveling them at the right times so like i said the break you get at level 10 level him to 16 and then you're gonna get a boar you're gonna level him to 17 you kind of want to like level both at the same time if that makes sense make sure they're both at 17 um get that deviate level in the 18 level the other two to 18 and then you can get two of them at 19. Um, I believe you're going to go a little over the experience bar into 19, so don't worry about that. Um, as long as you guys aren't hitting 20, you're golden. Um, just be careful killing mobs that you guys don't need to kill at 19, though. So that's that. Moving into the talents, though. So we have Beast Mastery, Marksman, and Survival. Beast Mastery, you guys are not going to touch. I do not recommend touching beast mastery at all it's just useless so like there's this right here improve aspect of the hawk while aspects of the hawk is active all normal range attacks have a one percent chance of increasing range attack speed by 30 percent for 12 seconds i know a lot of people like recommend going for this talent and beast mastery for whatever reason it's just it's not you guys are missing out on so much more so i'm going to show you guys a optimal um solid build right here that you guys can use that'll give you the good defensive survivability and a good dps output as well um what i mean by that is you're gonna have a lot of stuns and immobilizations which is very nice so you're gonna put three into humanoid slaying increases all damage against humanoid targets which is gonna be the people who are killing in pvp um, by three percent and increases critical damage caused against humanoid targets by an additional three percent that's actually huge that's that's you're getting some big numbers right there and then you got deflection and um, you're gonna put two into here this is increasing your parry chance by two like i said for that survivability chance and then you're gonna put two into improved wing clip which is giving your wing clip ability an eight percent chance to immobilize the target for five seconds and then you have uh three in the marksman which is improved concussion shot which gives it a concussive shot a 12 percent chance to stun the target for three seconds Seconds, which is very nice for kiting guys very nice you guys can get some nice aim shots off of that stun as well if you guys time it right and you do it right so that's something you guys can look into as well now if you guys don't like this build you guys don't like you know too defensive um you guys can go for some big numbers which is pure marksmanship so what you would do is you put five into improved concussive shot um that's going to be a very higher chance to stun that target and then you're going to put five into lethal shots which is increasing your critical strike chance with your weapons um obviously that percentage is going to go higher as you put more into it. i believe it's up to five percent which is very nice so you guys are going to get some big numbers through this if you guys are looking for the juicy crits um this is a nice little build to go for but if you guys want that optimal survivability but yet a good dps output um this right here this little l shape and then the three into marksmanship is the way to go so moving on to the macros there isn't really that much to a hunter um, at a lower level that is but i'm going to give you guys some pretty basic ones that you guys can use that'll like help you out in the long run um, this is an auto shot macro as simple as it sounds and silly as it sounds um, this is giving you guys the most optimal dps as simple as an auto shot you guys can like actually do a cast and not have auto shot on so that prevents you from getting a lot more damage that you really need to so this is a good macro to do it um this is really good as well i put this as a rank one that way in case you guys don't have a lot of mana left i'm pretty sure the rank two is the highest you guys can get so if you guys can't have the mana for rank two it's gonna do rank one no matter what um what this is it's just gonna cast arcane shot and then it's gonna auto shot right after that that way you guys are continuously um popping out damage no matter what you guys are doing um, a second macro I have is the melee macro. This is basically everything in a single one. I don't think counterattack. Let me take that one out of there. Um, this is pretty much everything that you guys have um, as a 19. Just putting into one macro. That way you guys are pumping out everything at once if they're up close to you. So you can put... Uh, actually, you can probably put wing clip in here as well. I mean, now that I think about it. You know, after a mongoose bite, you can throw a wing clip in there. But, I mean, it's on you guys what you guys want to do. This is just a little common melee macro you guys can have right here. So you guys can stop your shooting and go right into melee. And this is a nice little pet macro. Um, what this is, it's going to use every single thing that the pet can use. Whatever is available, whatever is up and ready for that pet it's going to use it right off the bat and charge the enemy that you want it to charge so it's kind of like you know the attack macro um that you would use on retail this is something that you guys can use on classic as well um what this does you're running around you want your pet to attack first you see it you want to send your pet in there immediately this is a good macro to use um it's going to use whatever he has available it's going to put him on follow passive or attack whatever is going on and then you're going to send him to that enemy 
Um, it's pretty much all the macros that I would have to offer um, that would pretty much benefit you guys the most that I can possibly think of. I mean, you can have some serpent sting macros up in there, um, you know, some uh, mouse over macro for serpent sting or a mouse over macro for a concussion. I mean, there's stuff like that, but like right here, these three macros are like the main big deal, you know, type macros that I would recommend that I can think of at the moment um, that would help you guys out. But uh, other than that, that is the end of this guide. Um, I hope you guys did learn something new. I hope I was able to explain just about everything there is to a hunter. Um, I just hunters are they're they're quite tricky to you know put a guide on. If I'm gonna be honest here. Um, but other than that, if there is something I left out, be sure to drop that down in the comment section below, guys. It would help everybody else out, and it'll help me out by updating it through the description. So, just if I left anything out, and if you guys know there's something big that I missed, put it down in the comment section below. Other than that, if you guys really enjoyed this video, drop it a like. If you really like to give it a favorite, commenting is free, as well as subscribing. It's been Resto, guys. See you guys next time.